G'day YouTube, 1MJ here. Welcome back to my channel. Just wanted to do a little quick video on a story I found that I think is uh, it's going to be bloody awesome for the industry. Uh, and I'm surprised uh, I didn't see anything else from it from anyone else uh, on YouTube. At least not that I saw. I'm not saying no one else has covered this story, but uh, definitely interesting. So I was just reading here on Coindesk.com, and this is a couple of days old, this one. But an Israeli firm develops tech allowing crypto users to retrieve funds sent in error. This will be absolutely amazing. Now, I don't know if it'll help about anything, uh, any unfortunate transactions we made previously. It probably won't be able to help us there, but I think this will definitely help uh, adoption in the future. This is kind of some of the things that would really put people off is that you accidentally send your crypto to the wrong address and then you lose it, especially if it's, you know, a lot of money for whoever it is, you know, a lot of money might be $50 to some people and other people would be hundreds, thousands and millions and all the rest of it. But if we go down here, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but Kirobo says its technology can prevent the loss of cryptocurrencies caused by human error when sending what are normally irreversible traction transactions between wallets. Uh, I can tell you right now, I've done this probably two or three times uh, already. Uh, I've been lucky, I haven't lost too much, but I did buy uh, a few hundred dollars worth of VeChain. Uh, this is probably about two months ago now. It was so cheap and it would be worth a lot right now. I couldn't even tell you how much it's gone up. VeChain's gone up multiple times since then. So if this would have been around back then, Oh, that'd be so good. I reckon I'd have at least a couple of thousand dollars in VeChain uh, sent to the wrong address. Um, yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm spewing. Uh, this isn't available just yet. Uh, currently, uh, it's by an Israeli team that's done it. And I think it's only uh, are going to be available on uh, Bitcoin transactions at the moment. And so the way it works is if you send uh, coins to any wallet, you have a code and the person on the other end needs to both have a code. And if the person on the other end doesn't get the code, you have to give them the code, then you as the sender, you can bring that uh, transaction back. That would be absolutely amazing. And I 100% believe that is going to be the future uh, for crypto to be adopted, you know, by the masses because no one could handle you know making a transaction and losing their money it'd just be too much you know that's the kind of things that will really hamper mass adoption this kind of stuff will be absolutely you know imperative to it going mainstream and being adopted by the masses so i'm really hoping that kirobo if i, I hope i'm pronouncing that right uh they get this up and running and start you know rolling it out to everyone and it even goes on further to say in the uh, article that they plan to roll it out to all types of wallets in the future it's not just going to be bitcoin it can be done to everyone and so this is an absolute cracker i really hope that uh, this gets out there really really fast because again i i know myself when i was new i sent again coins uh, to the wrong addresses and only just recently like i said bloody v chain i'm absolutely kicking myself couple of hundred dollars worth of v chain and it'd be worth well over a thousand dollars now that v chain right now so i'm absolutely spewing that i can't get that back it's gone and there's nothing that i can do about it so yeah that is an absolute mm, that hurts i don't know how else to say it. that really hurts but anyway this is the kind of technology that we definitely need in the space so well done uh, to this israeli team and again hopefully i'm saying it right Karobo, that's the kind of tech that we need that's really going to lead to mass adoption. Anyway, last but not least, we'll go over and have a look at the uh, markets. So they are traveling down a bit. So again, I've got my graph up here. And if we have a look, we're still traveling in this channel. Like I said, this is the 50 day moving average. So we've dipped below there. And we're down around the kind of $9,000 range. I'm really watching for this one, the 100 day moving average, and even more so, really the 200 day moving average. I I suspect that we're gonna see Bitcoin kinda of just slowly but surely drop down here, drop down here, and stay in this hopefully upper channel until we bounce off the 100 or 200. My kinda of gut feeling is I'm more looking for the bounce off the 200, but who knows, we could find the 100 uh, and bounce off that as well. But I definitely see it kind of happening somewhere over around about here. So let's say me maybe end of July going into August, I think somewhere around here is where we're gonna find out exactly whether it's going to start dropping lower 
or we're finally going to get the breakout that everyone is kind of expecting. But in saying that, everyone is expecting Bitcoin to break out. And look, I have no doubt that at some stage it will. Just my gut feeling is quite often Bitcoin will do the opposite of what people are thinking. Now, not all the time. Obviously, once it starts to get in a bull run, it's just in a bull run. That's the way it's going to go. But, you know, people are still debating about whether we're in a bull run. I mean, if we go a little back a little bit, I guess you could say from here, so uh, 14th of December 2018, technically we are in a bull run. That was a pretty good run up. Now it's fallen back a bit, pumped up again took a big dive and we know that was all to do with the you know the pandemic and that and now we've pumped up and again we've been really sitting in this kind of area for quite some time now sometimes kind of above uh, above sorry and sometimes below and again the average price range for about three three years now has been between sort of eight thousand and six thousand dollars so we're currently trading above it could we go below sure absolutely quite possible but i my personal belief is that I don't think we're going to go below. I would be very surprised if Bitcoin went below eight thousand dollars. That's not to say I don't think it can't happen. I'm just I'm I'm kind of I don't want to say betting because I'm not much of a betting man, but I'm guessing that we're going to find some support sort of somewhere around about here before we finally start to break out. But look. When I'd really start to worry a little bit is if we got below that $6,000 mark, then I'd really be worried. But even so, I could see it going below 6000 and not be too worried. It's really this bottom trend line that would really start to worry me. If we ever drop below that uh, bottom trend line, outside of wicking below it, which we've done on occasions, then I would truly be worried. So it is quite possible that we could get back down into the kind of 5000s Who knows? But yeah, my sort of guess... Uh, my gut instinct, you know, <laughs> my savant skills, you might even say. Yeah, I, I'm guessing that we're going to meet up somewhere around here, so sort of July, August, and we're going to start to bounce off one of these sort of indicators here, whether it's the 100 or the 200. You know, my guess would be more the 200, but who knows? It could be the 100. We're going to bounce off that, and then we're start. We're going to start to break out of this channel here, and then you know that's when I guess people will probably be saying we're really on the next bull run. But I wouldn't be surprised if we broke out of this kind of uh, channel and then even start to run down outside this channel, but then again start to go back up over here. So that's my gut feeling and just a quick one from me. Anyway, thanks very much. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. And I'm out.